This video is going to take a look at four investment grade, high quality real estate investment trusts offering an average yield between the four of them of over 5% with very, very powerful dividend persistent scores and ability to generate adequate rates of return over the long run through a combination of income, moderate growth, and then the ability to reinvest that dividend so that you can accumulate wealth in the future. Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of Fast Graphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool, a.k.a. Mr. Valuation. It's my pleasure today to talk to you about four real estate investment trusts that I want to bring to your attention that I think are really worthy of your consideration now. As I go through this video, though, I want to do a couple of things for you. REITs are kind of a unique animal in the investment world. They're not a common stock. They're a real estate investment trust. They operate under laws that require them to pay 90% of their distributable income, which gives them the ability to be very generous and very consistent and even persistent income providers. Okay, but if you also utilize them correctly, they can also become very great capital appreciation opportunities as well. Most of these REITs we're going to look at here have performed very well in relation to the S&P 500 from a standpoint of total return. But you're going to discover as I go through this that the big results came as a result of the consistent dividend and dividend growth that they provided their shareholders. So let's go ahead and dig into these four high quality real estate investment trusts that are in value. The companies we're going to cover today are Realty Income, the monthly dividend payer, Digital Realty Trust, NNN REIT Inc., and WP Carey. Now I want you to notice that as REITs go, these are amongst the highest quality. Realty income may be considered the highest quality REIT of all. But all of these other REITs are investment grade, offering triple B and triple B plus credit ratings. Realty income is a retail REIT. Digital Realty is a data center REIT. NNN REIT is another retail REIT. And WP Carey is a diversified REIT. As you can see, we've got dividend yields ranging from just under 5% to 6%, giving us an average yield between the four of these of over 5%. Their dividend consistency score is important because it shows, you know, how these companies have, you know, been in terms of paying dividends year after year after year. And their dividend growth score is even more important, in my opinion, because this shows the, how consistently they have grown their dividend over years. And then this shows, based on the 20 years of, you know, roughly of history that we have, how many years they've paid dividends consecutively. And then these are the valuations and the operating cash flow yields. As you can see, all of them are over the six and a half to seven percent number that I personally like. And by the way, as you'll see when we get into these individual companies, that's pretty attractive for REITs because they don't get much lower than that typically. All right. Now, the best expected performance from these group of REITs would be Digital Realty with a 32% total annualized rate of return over about the next three years. That would be followed by NNN REIT, which would offer about 27.9 or 28%. And then that would be followed by Realty Income. And last would be WP Carey, which doesn't offer a great total rate of return, but I'm going to show you how you can still make money owning that REIT. So let's go ahead and go in, in the order that we're, we're produced here. So I'm going to start out, I'm actually going to do it in alphabetic order. I'm going to start out with digital realty. All right. Now, one of the things that you utilize when you're looking at REITs is you utilize f what's called funds from operations, which is operating cash flow for most normal companies. So you're going to be using the metric operating cash flow, but in parentheses, it's FFO or funds from operations. And what I want you to see with Digital Realty is they've grown their FFO by 8.9%. That's the fastest growth in this group. And you can see how consistently that has grown. Now, coming through COVID, they did have a minor drop. They had two, actually three, four or five years of what I would call rather weak results, relatively speaking, but they were still very profitable and they still had, you know, great dividend coverage. And I do want you to notice that they did increase their dividend each and every year. And that's going to become important here later. Now, when I put weekly closing stock prices on this graph, well, before I do that, let me make a point because I, I find that it's often misunderstood. This orange line represents the fair value line. 
And it's the value investors, you know, holy grail, if you will. You only want to invest in a stock or a REIT in this case when you can buy it where the price is in line with fair value because that positions you as an investor to fully participate in whatever the company can generate. And if you overpay, the company can do great and you might not do so great. And if you can ever buy it at a bargain, the company can do mediocre and you can do great and all those things in between. But the key is to buy them when it makes economic sense. And that's one of the real keys to REITs. Now, I'm going to put weekly closing stock prices on this graph. And I do want you to notice that the price generally, the black line here, moves in line with where the FFO in this case, the funds from operations go. All right. Now, there are times when the market undervalues the rate. And the important thing here is to pay more attention to the orange line, which, as you can see, very, very consistent and less attention to the black line other than giving you clues as to when you should be buying or selling or holding the investment. And what should be obvious by looking at this graph is you don't want to invest in this REIT or any investment when the valuation is way above the orange line, because that can usually lead to disastrous results. If you'd have bought this in August of 2020, you'd have lost an average of 11%. You'd have turned $10,000 into 6300 in spite of the dividend income you'd receive. But if you'd have bought this, say, back in September of 2015, when it was below the orange line, and even now that it's touching the orange line, you average double digit rates of return. If you measure the valuation up into where it got overvalued, which can give you opportunities, you made over 20%. So it's the old story that valuation matters and it matters a lot. Now, this REIT started out this period of time in value. It ended up in value, even though it went overvalued and undervalued several times within this roughly 20-year period. Okay, but I want to point out to you again that 8.9% was the growth rate during this period of time. So let's look at the performance, if you will, of digital realty over this time frame. And let's look at how it compares if you will, to the S&P 500, which is the general mark. Now, if you'd have put $10,000 on January 6, 2006, and held it to May 15, 2023, that's 17.4 years, that $10,000 investment would have grown to $34,636, okay? That's giving you a 12.8% rate of return versus 9.02% for the stock market. And this was a very, very good period of time for the stock market. But I want to show you what we're doing here. The end of period shares, initially you'd have bought 440 shares. But what we're doing here is we're reinvesting the dividends. Okay, so by reinvesting the dividends, you dramatically outperformed the S&P. You generated almost twice as much, you know, money in the S&P, 81,000 versus 44,000. And, and that's reinvesting the dividends in the S&P. But let's take that off of there for a moment. Let's uncheck reinvest dividends, as you can do in Fastgrass. Let's save those changes. And now let's look at this company buying the original $10,000 worth of shares and the share staying constant and look at how it compares. Now, here's what I want you to really focus on. In this case, this is the fastest growing REIT in the universe I'm covering here. Company generated 8.59% capital appreciation. Turn 10,000 into 41,000 versus 10,000 into 32,000 in the market. Now, what I want you to see about that again is that essentially the rate of return mirrored or correlated very highly with the 8.9% growth rate that the company generated. You can see it's, you know, almost a perfect number. But what I really want you to focus on in the stock market, if you'd invested in the S&P, your 10000 would have thrown off $5,347 in dividends if you were taking the dividends and not reinvesting them, but it threw off over 22000 in digital realty. This is the real advantage of investing in REITs. It's the consistent and persistent ability of these companies to generate dividend and dividend income. And I do want you to notice here that the dividend growth on this company, as you can see all the different years, has averaged double-digit rates. Now, it's slowed down a little bit here in recent years, okay, and this has to do, I think, partially with rising interest rates. But the point is, over time, 
this company dramatically outperformed the market, whether you measure it reinvesting dividends or not. But here's a key point, and I want to focus all of you on this. REITs tend to be relatively volatile, okay? And that volatility means that, that, you know, during low interest rate environments, they got very highly valued. But those were not good times to be investing in REITs, okay? They looked good for a while, but they turned out to generate very, very mediocre returns, The best time to invest in REITs is when they're cheap. And as you can see, digital realty right now is trading at a price that makes economic sense relative to its historical norms. Now, it's possible, especially if rates keep rising, that it could drop further from here. No one can predict the short-term price movements. But you can buy it today with a 4.96% dividend yield, an FFO yield of 6.81%, and it has very modest debt. Now, I want to look at a couple other things before I leave. I'm going to do this with each company. I'm going to go into the financials here, okay? And we're going to go into the fiscal fitness because what I want you to see is this important aspect of REITs. Digital Realty has increased their share count or sold their shares repeatedly year after year, diluting shareholders at a compounded growth rate of over 15%. Okay, the point is that what they do is they go in, they, they sell stock, they use that money to buy additional real estate, and then that real estate generates increasing sales revenue or you know total income for them, which becomes distributable because of the nature of REITs and also becomes reinvestable, as I illustrated. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to go through the other four companies, the other three companies as well, so that you see that this is a pretty normal occurrence in REITs. If I go to NNN REIT, I want you to notice that they've increased their share count every year, but also that they use that money to buy additional real estate and their revenues also increased each year. If I go the same thing, if I go to Realty Income, we see that they increased their revenues dramatically, and we also see that they increased their share count. They kept selling stock in order to buy more real estate. And again, that's the nature of the beast. I think it's important for you to understand that it's one of the things that keeps them from growing more than they are because they keep diluting their shareholders. But as a result of doing that, and here's WP Carey, again, issuing shares over time. But as a result of issuing their shares, they also increase their revenues dramatically, which become distributable to their shareholders. Okay, so let's go ahead and you know go through the rest of them. Let's look at NNN. And here's something that I want you to focus on now. I want you to pay attention. When you're looking at fast graphs in the fast facts box, the orange box here will tell you what PE, or in this case, price to FFO multiple is being calculated by the orange line. It's a 15 multiple, but that multiple is only growing by 3.38%. So if we go into the performance of NNN, which has grown much slower, I want to point out than digital realty, Okay, but before I do this, let's also look at this aspect so that you're you're on the same page. It was undervalued in the beginning, and it's slightly undervalued now. Okay, so that 3.88% is going to translate into performance that averaged. And once again here, we're reinvesting the dividends. And I want you to notice that, you know, it generated 90,000 versus 66,000 even though it grew slower than the market in large. But if I go back into my settings here, and I, again, take off the reinvestment of dividends, because I want you to see it both ways, I want you to notice that the capital appreciation was about five and a quarter percent, which I want to be very clear so that everybody understands this. That's very consistent with the company's growth rate achievement of just under 4%, expanded a little bit by the fact that it was undervalued. So we had some P.E. ratio or price to FFO ratio expansion. It was 10.64 on the beginning of this graph. It is now 13.98. We had 3.88% growth plus a dividend that grew every year. So now when I look at this, I see that the dividend has grown at a relatively low rate of about 2.7%. But if I look at it in pieces, a $10,000 investment back on January 3rd, 2003, would have thrown off $22,000 in income compared to $8,000 in the market. It would have underperformed the S&P from the standpoint of capital appreciation, 
but it came out to be almost give you an equal annualized rate of return because of the tremendous income advantage. But once again, and I'm making this point over and over again, by reinvesting the dividends, by reinvesting the dividends, we had tremendous outperformance because of the predictability and the consistency of the dividend payments. If we then go look at realty income, and I'm looking at it here from the standpoint of reinvesting the dividends, you can see that it generated almost a 12% annualized rate of return versus nine in the overall general market. Once again, if I go into the settings bar here, just so we keep this in perspective, and I uncheck reinvest dividends, in save changes, we see that the company threw off $20,000 in dividends versus six for the S&P over this time frame, slightly different time frame than some of the others. So we ended up with capital appreciation of 6% versus seven, which by the way, if we go back into the historical chart, that's consistent with the 5.37% growth rate the company achieved and a very minor amount of undervaluation here, PE of 13 expanding to 15, that gave us a little bit higher number than the 5.37%. Than the, uh, it gave us a 6% annualized rate of return, and it outperformed the market even without reinvesting the dividends, and I think that's very important. Now, I also want to go into the next one here. Let's look at WP Carey. And again, WP Carey threw off over 20,000 in dividends versus five for the market, underperformed on a capital appreciation, but on a total return basis because of the prodigious amount of dividends, it outperformed the market even without reinvesting dividends. But once again, we get consistency of dividends and dividend growth. This one a little bit less than the others I've shown you, but still pretty consistent. If I reinvest the dividends here, we once again see that they generated significantly more total return than the market, even with the market reinvesting dividends as well. It's the dividend income, which is really the key to these real estate investment trusts. Now, there's another aspect of this I want to go into before I leave this. You know, when you're evaluating REITs, a lot of talk right now about the fact that interest rates are going down. Now, I want you to note that when you look at all these REITs here, Look at how high, I'll look at realty income, which is I consider the highest quality. Look at how highly valued it was when interest rates were low. So the rising interest rate market has brought the stock down into fair value. That's something I want you to understand very clearly. That's what gave us the opportunity to invest in this. I was not interested in realty income when it was trading at these valuations. I'm now willing to start looking at it. Now, it still might be too early to invest, but I think you could safely invest here just by looking at the historical president. It took the Great Recession to get it low, and then, of course, look how quickly it recovered right after the recession. So I'm not real worried about long-term downside here as much as I am in, in the future, but I want you to note the company has 41% debt. Okay, and that then becomes an issue. But thanks to Fast Graphs, you can go into Fast Graphs, go into the company's corporate website, go into investors, look up their financials, things like their SEC filings. And then what you want to look for here is you want to look for supplemental information. So what I've done here is I've gone into their quarterly and annual results, and I'm looking for their supplemental information. And when you go into the supplemental information, you can click on it, and you get these reports here. And what you can do by going through these supplemental reports, you can go down here and look at, you know, all the information you need on the stock. But what I want you to focus on here is their debt summary, okay? Because you can look here and you can find the dates of all their maturities, when they're due, what percentage of debt they are, what the interest rate they're carrying or paying for that debt, and know that they have the ability and be able to you know, check that and then look at your maturities and see what they are. So this way you can analyze the debt. You can do that for each and every one of these REITs by simply going into the corporate website from the company. But the bottom line here is that real estate investment trusts are very unique. They are steady growers, even though they're very dilutive in nature. But the reason they're dilutive is they tend to be overvalued. So I like the fact that they're selling stock into these hot markets, if you will. They're then using that money 
to buy more real estate. And then they have debt instruments, which I just showed you that are real easy to handle and amortize because of their, you know, of the fact that they generate so much income. Other metrics I like to look at when I'm looking at REACH, you might also want to look at REACH from a point of view of EBITDA, which is very similar to the FFO. And all these stocks that are in this particular group look attractive on, on a normal price to EBITDA basis right now. This is a good time to be looking at these REITs. And you can see Digital Realty came down from way off of its high horse here, which made it very attractive. You also want to look at what you already covered with you, look at revenues and note that the revenues are continuing to grow. And of course, that's where you're going to get, you know, the rising dividend yields and the high dividend yields that I talked about before. But anyway, even though interest rates are rising, I think the risk has already been mitigated in the dropping stock prices. And if you're looking for just a good, predictable, reliable ability to generate above average rate of returns, you can buy REITs and reinvest the dividends. But if you need income, you can also get very healthy income levels from them. And the one thing I did or mention about income levels, I want you just to notice their yield on cost here. You know, if you'd have bought the realty income in 2003, remember, they pay monthly dividends, okay? If you'd have bought it back during this date here and held it, your yield would have increased each and every year. That last year, you'd have been getting over 47% or $4,728 on your original $10,000 investment. And that's not, okay, I want to emphasize that's reinvesting the dividends and accumulating more shares of the stock. And then you can turn that amount of income on at that point and then really have an income in your retirement years. Now, from a pure standpoint, the yield on costs went from 6% up to 17%. But by reinvesting the dividends, you were able to expand on that dramatically. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGrass Fundamentals Analyzer Software Tool. Wanted to just give, take the opportunity here to show you some real estate investment trusts that are starting to look very, very interesting to me. I picked very high quality ones and ones that I think are going to continue to do well, even in this rising interest rate environment. All of them, if you go through the debt covenants like I showed you in the video, you'll see they can all handle the amount of debt they have, in my opinion, at least. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a like, ring the bell, certainly subscribe to the YouTube channel. And also take a look at FastGrass. What a great and powerful tool that can really help you make better, long-term, sounder, more profitable, long-term investment decisions. Thanks for watching and look forward to talking to you guys again real soon.